Hi, it's Katrina. Number nine, the future of Earth and humanity. It's pretty likely that at some point the world is going to end. Whether or not humanity survives until that point remains to be seen. But if we are still around, our existence will undoubtedly end when the world does. Unless we identify another planet that can support life. And we can somehow manage to get there first. So when exactly will this all happen? And how can we expect the future to unfold? Well, over the next several hundred million years, comets, asteroids, supernova explosions, and other random celestial events could cause mass extinctions on Earth. These are less predictable than other things that scientists foresee happening, including intermittent glacial periods and the formation of a supercontinent. Things will start to get ugly in about 600 million years, when the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere drops too low to support photosynthesis, causing all plant life to die off. Naturally, animal life will follow. In roughly 1 billion years, the oceans will evaporate, bringing the carbon cycle to an end. Within 4 billion years, a runaway greenhouse effect will heat the Earth's surface to high enough temperatures to melt it. By then, all life will be extinct anyway. When the sun becomes a red giant in about 5 billion years, the planet will be completely scorched. It's hard to say for sure when the Earth will become uninhabitable for humans, but it's something experts are already trying to plan for, especially as human activity speeds up the destruction of the planet. In fact, if climate change continues along its current trajectory, some parts of the world may be incapable of hosting human life by the year 2500. Of course, none of us will be around when any of these catastrophic events take place. But it's up to us and our future generations to do something about it. The search is on for an alternative living space, namely a planet that people could live on and that isn't too far away for us to get to. So far, experts have identified several planets with seemingly Earth-like qualities. But they have yet to determine whether there is one out there that has the very specific properties it takes to support oxygen breathing life forms. This all reminds me of the show The Hundred. Did any of you watch that? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. What is Dark Matter? Only a small percentage of the universe is made up of things we can actually observe, like planets, stars, asteroids, and galaxies. Researchers believe that around a quarter of the universe consists of dark matter, a substance that the human eye can't see and we don't fully understand. We literally don't even know what it is. According to one theory, dark matter holds fast-moving galaxies together, acting as a sort of spider web. So much of it exists that it bends the appearance of space, causing galaxies to look distorted to the scientists who observe them. Some galaxies are made almost entirely of dark matter. One of them, called Dragonfly 44, is roughly the size of the Milky Way and is 99.9% .9 made up of the substance. Dark matter doesn't emit light or energy, so how do scientists know it's there? According to Yale researcher Peter Van Dokum, the movement of the stars tells experts how much matter is in the universe. Based on that, they know that there are things they just can't see. Evidence strongly suggests that dark matter is a real thing, but researchers have yet to identify it. Some think that it's a yet undiscovered particle, while others theorize that it's a gravitational property that we don't yet know about. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 7. What is dark energy and where does it come from? Speaking of matter, what's the difference between dark energy and dark matter? Dark matter is thought to make up 25% of the universe, while observable matter makes up about 5%. Scientists believe that the remaining 70% consists of something called dark energy. Unlike dark matter, which seems to hold galaxies together, dark energy pushes things apart. It's believed to be responsible for the fact that the universe is expanding much faster than it should be. In 1998, scientists observed distant supernovae using the Hubble Space Telescope. They realized that in the distant past, the universe was expanding more slowly than it is now. This ran contrary to their theory that gravity would slow the expansion and eventually stop the universe from getting bigger. They knew something must be causing this accelerated growth and termed this mysterious force as dark energy. Much like dark matter, 
Nobody knows what it is or how it works, but it goes against our understanding of how the universe should work based on physics. Dark energy has the opposite effect of gravity, which pulls things toward each other, and the two seem to be entangled in a tug of war. During the early stages of the universe's existence, gravity was the dominant force that influenced its structure. This enabled stars, galaxies, and galaxy clusters to form. But instead of slowing down as the laws of physics would normally dictate, something caused the expansion of the universe to speed up sometime between 3 and 7 billion years ago. And it's been accelerating ever since, proving that dark energy has a bigger influence than gravity. There are several ongoing projects seeking to explain what dark energy is and how it works. So we'll just have to wait and see what they find. Number 6. The Fermi Paradox the vastness of the universe is incomprehensible, and it's getting bigger every day. Thinking about it from the perspective of sheer size alone, it's hard for many to believe that Earth is the only place where there is life. But scientists have yet to find evidence of life elsewhere, even though the possibility seems highly probable. This is what's known as the Fermi Paradox. It's named after the Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi, who asked, where is everybody? while discussing recent UFO sightings with colleagues in 1950. Experts have come up with a few possible explanations for the Fermi paradox. The most favored theory holds that intelligent extraterrestrial beings are extremely rare, and that it's unlikely that two of these civilizations would ever meet. The Milky Way alone contains billions of stars that are similar to the Sun. At least some of them have planets in what's known as the circumstellar habitable zone, which is the distance from the star where a planet could support liquid water with the right atmospheric pressure. And some of these stars and their planets are much older than the Sun, suggesting that they could have harbored intelligent life long ago. Perhaps these civilizations developed interstellar travel and visited Earth. Or maybe the Fermi paradox is wrong. For example, some people simply don't believe that there is life on other planets, or that if it does exist, it's incredibly rare. Others think that even if life exists elsewhere, intelligence may not. It's also possible that life on other planets is frequently wiped out by extinction events, which have happened here on Earth. There are numerous other proposed explanations, including the possibility that any existing intelligent civilizations may still be in their primitive stages and aren't technologically advanced enough to communicate outside their planet. Or perhaps other existing life forms are completely capable of making contact with our planet and they are just choosing not to. What do you think about this? Do you believe in extraterrestrial beings? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family. Number 5. Is there a multiverse? Scientists have explored less than 0.1% of our vast universe. And yet, we've already begun to wonder what could be beyond it, if anything. One possibility, known as the multiverse theory, suggests that the universe is just one of many, all which have their own galaxies, stars, and laws of physics. If other universes exist, then it's of course also possible that they harbor intelligent life. The idea of a multiverse builds on something called inflation theory, at the very beginning of the universe, it underwent a brief period of rapid expansion called inflation. Our universe stopped inflating 14 billion years ago, but inflation may not have ended everywhere at the same time, according to cosmologist Helling Deng, who spoke with Live Science. He further explained that inflation may have ended in some regions and continued in others, and that it may still continue today. In distant regions where inflation continues, there could be an ever-expanding sea of universes. And, as I mentioned before, each one would have its own space objects and laws of physics. This could help to explain properties of space that scientists don't currently understand based on the known laws of physics, such as dark matter. The multiverse theory gets rather complicated. In simple terms, the strongest evidence that there is one is the fact that intelligent life exists and that we're capable of making cosmological observations. In the words of research scientist McCullen Sandora, the properties of our universe that can support life would not likely be present in the case of just one random universe having been created. 
In other words, it seems more likely that ours is one of many. Otherwise, life would be improbable. It's a lot to think about, and many scientists aren't sold on the idea of a multiverse. Some of them have said that they might be more open to it if hard physical evidence of it were found. Still, others think it's entirely possible, or perhaps even likely. Number 4. How do supermassive black holes form? Black holes are regions of density with a massive gravitational pull that sucks in everything around them. Anything that comes within a certain distance of one will be totally devoured. This point of no return is known as an event horizon, and not even light can escape after it's entered. It explains why we can't see black holes, which also makes them incredibly difficult to study. The biggest black holes in the universe are billions of times the size of our sun. Known as supermassive black holes, scientists know very little about them. How they form and how they grow so big are mysteries for the most part. And while experts believe that there is a supermassive black hole at the center of almost every large galaxy, they don't know how this arrangement came to be. A standard black hole forms when a dying star explodes as a supernova and then collapses in on itself. But it doesn't accrete or suck in surrounding material at a high enough rate for any of them to have grown into supermassive black holes, since the first stars died hundreds of millions of years ago. The enigma deepened for scientists when they realized that these strange space objects already existed during the universe's infancy. So how did they grow when the universe was just a baby? Where did they get all that energy from? Supermassive black holes are clearly linked with the formation of galaxies, and learning more about how they are created could help scientists better understand this connection. Number 3. Cosmic Rays The Earth is routinely bombarded from all directions by high-energy particles from outer space, called cosmic rays, which travel at nearly the speed of light. Some cosmic rays contain the most energetic particles ever observed in nature. Most of the time, the atmosphere protects us from them. Astronauts and aircraft crew members are exposed to higher radiation levels due to the presence of cosmic rays high up in the stratosphere. Thankfully, the risks still aren't very high. The same can't always be said for electronics, however. Once in a while, a cosmic ray strikes a device that's orbiting the Earth and causes serious damage to it. The high-energy particles interfere with the electronic system and can cause it to crash. Researchers are still learning about cosmic rays. One of their goals is to better understand the effects that these fast-moving particles have on electronics. Thankfully, it's rare for a cosmic ray to strike a device, but it would still come in handy to know more about the dynamics behind these interactions and what, if anything, can be done to prevent or fix the problems they cause. For starters, scientists don't even know what causes cosmic rays. They've put forth various theories for the possible source of these high-energy particles that are being catapulted through space, including a powerful cosmic explosion, colliding galaxies, and black holes consuming stars. But for now, the mystery endures. Number 2. Mystery Roar most people think of space as a dark, empty, and quiet place. This makes sense since most of space is a vacuum, meaning that sound waves can't travel through it. But radio waves can travel through space, and while they are not the same thing as sound, they are electromagnetic, meaning they fall on the low-frequency end of the light spectrum and are detectable and measurable. Stars, quasars, galaxies, and other space objects all emit radio waves. Even the Milky Way lets out a static hiss, but these sounds aren't very well understood by scientists, and some are stranger than others. For example, in 2009, researchers detected a cosmic noise that was much louder than they expected it to be. They have no idea what caused it, other than something far off in the distant reaches of the universe. The team picked up the signal using a balloon-borne instrument that was launched in 2006 as part of a mission to detect heat left over from the first generation of stars. It reached an altitude of around 120,000 feet, where it measured the unexpected roar, instead of the faint signals that scientists expected. It was six times brighter or louder than the combined emissions of all the universe's known radio signals. 
They ruled out the possibilities that the radio waves came from primordial stars, gases at the edge of our galaxy, other radio galaxies, and several other potential sources. But that didn't bring the team any closer to figuring out the mystery Roar's origins, and they still don't know what it is today. Number 1. How Will the Universe End? Scientists once thought that the universe could live on forever, but it seems more and more likely that it'll end at some point. There are different theories for how this could happen. Most are based on Einstein's theory of general relativity. One theory, known as the Big Crunch, suggests that our expanding universe will eventually stop growing, reverse course, and collapse into itself. It's essentially the opposite of the Big Bang. In fact, after a Big Crunch happens, another Big Bang would happen, and a new universe would be formed. Just like the one we're living in, it would expand until a certain point, experience another big crunch, and so on, in an infinite cycle of death and rebirth. A more recent theory called the Big Freeze proposes that the universe will continue to drift apart like it is now until galaxies and stars stop forming. All the stars will die and the night sky will go completely dark as black holes devour everything around them. When all is said and done, no traces of heat will exist. These are just two of the multiple ideas scientists have put forth about how the universe might meet its eventual death. It's a scary thought, but luckily it won't happen during our lifetime. In fact, researchers estimate that a big freeze would happen trillions of years into the future, long after the Earth is gone. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up! And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe! See you next time!